Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to be talking about additive animation. And the reason I'm doing this is because number one, additive animations are super cool because they allow you to create new animations based on other animations that you have. The other reason I'm doing it is because it's also very confusing and a lot of that can be related to the terminology that's used. Now to understand additive animations, you really need to understand the animation blueprint, especially the atom graph, and also the animation sequence, because that's where you'll see a lot of this. So that's what we're going to do today, and there's some terminology I'll be discussing as we go. To do this, all we're going to do is we're going to jump into the mannequins here, and we're going to go to the animations, and we're going to go into Manny here. Now remember that Quinn is a child of Manny. Let's just jump into an animation sequence here, and this is just a T-pose, right? This is very interesting because it's just really one frame. Where we see all this stuff is over here on the side. You'll see we have additive settings. So what we can do is we can import an animation into here and apply it to this animation here, to this T-pose. To get started, really, the question is, what really is an additive animation? And it's essentially the difference between two poses added to another pose. That's the easiest way to say it. It's the difference between two poses applied to another pose. So you need a, a base pose or a reference pose and an animation. Those are subtracted from each other. Pose one is subtracted to pose two, it, and then that difference is applied to another animation. And you'll see that down here. So you'll notice down here where it says additive anim type. If there's no additive, we're, we're not adding anything because we don't have an additive animation to add. So what we'd have to do here is select a space. And we get into these two terms, and this is... This is very confusing, and it's confusing a lot to do with the terminology. And let's let's talk about that real fast. So we've got these terms, right? We've got component space, mesh space, global space, root space. They all mean the same thing, but they have different terms or names depending on where you are in the engine. So the skeletal mesh refers to component space, and so does the animation uh, blueprint. Additive animations refer to mesh space. The control rig refers to global space. And then you also have root space. And then you have also local space and bone space, which are about the same. But this is the term that's confusing. And to this, you could even add world space. So here's what we talked about earlier as far as, far as animation, additive animations go. They require a compatible skeleton. You'll see that in just a minute. An additive animation is a base or reference pose minus the animation. So this is like pose one minus pose two equals our additive animation. And then we add this to whatever we want to add it to. And that's where it starts getting really, really cool what we can create. And you'll see that at the end of this tutorial. So then we have local space and it says the additive animation is calculated from or offset from its parent bone. It's relative to the parent bone. The additive animation is calculated from or offset from the root bone or relative to the mesh as a whole or the root bone. And these are just some general notes. You can just pause the screen and read all that. I won't read all that to you. This is important to know that different operations require different spaces to work in. And when we're doing something like an atom offset, and that may be where a character's head or a weapon is pointing in a certain direction, we need to be in a mesh space for that. And you would see that in the atom graph if you're working on something like that in there. So let's jump into back into here and we'll go over this a little bit more. Let me click this character on this character and we'll go to character and we'll go to bones and we'll go to hierarchy so we can see things here. Now I wanted to, let me jump over here and just talk real quickly about the difference between world space and and local space. And it's really, that difference is really the same as the difference between mesh space and local space. So I did a tutorial about this before, but right now you see this little icon here, we click it, we're in world space. So I have this cube, right? And if I move it, I can move up and down in three dimensions, right? And if I go into local space, you really can't tell any difference what I'm doing, right? But where you can see a difference is if I go into rotation, like we do with bones, right? And I rotate this now. Now notice, look at how this looks. When I'm in world space, look at the graph. See how it, it creates a shaded area because I'm moving 
with regard to world, the origin, right? The origin. You can think of, of world space as a 3D grid here that takes over the whole universe. And so we're moving in relationship to where the origin is in the scene here, right? Essentially in a 3D grid. So if I were to turn this, and you see the difference here, if you see it look like that, that means we're in world space. Now look, oh, let me click here, and I go back to this. When I move this, well, I'm in local space right now, but look, see where the what happens to the pointers when I click here, the difference? So here, they're pointing straight up because I'm in world space, right? But if I click here, notice I'm going to move in relationship to the object itself. That's essentially the difference between mesh space and local space. So here we're moving in reference to the origin of the world, the 000 in 3D space on essentially a grid that you can't see. And here in local space, we're moving in relationship to the object itself. So that's essentially the difference. When we're working with the skeleton, the skeleton essentially is a world onto its own self, right? It's, a, it's its own world because it's its own bone structure. So here, the origin is here on the root bone, right? So when we're in mesh space, if I come here, everything's going to calculate with regard to this root here. And that would be for something like if I click the head here and I was going to move the head, we want the head to move in relationship to the origin of the whole object, right? So it wouldn't make sense for it to turn, look up in relationship to here. We really want it turning in relationship to the the root bone. You can think of it as if you were going on a trip somewhere. Like, let's say you were going to drive from Dallas to Miami. Well, you'd want to look at the whole map to see where you're going, right? You'd want to make your decision in world space, right? You'd want to see the whole map so you'd get on the right road. If you try to take off in local space, you'd head off probably maybe in the wrong direction. So there may be times where you want to be in local space, but then there may be times you want to be in world space. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. For what we're trying to do, we want to be in, let me let me put this head back uh, normal, more straight. I can just zero these out, I think, here, is be in local space for what we're going to try to do today. So that's just some terminology to get your mind around because you'll see it over here. What are we going to work in? We're going to be working in local space. And local space is usually the default in the atom graph too, unless we are unless we are doing something related to a global movement or like an aim offset or turning the head or something globally related to what we're trying to do. The local space is more specific. Now we we have this skeleton reference pose. That's not the one that we're looking for. We can come up here and we're going to go from selected animation here. And you'll see now we can import any animation. And scaled here means scaled in terms of time, not scaled in terms of like you normally think of scaling something up or down. Scaling here refers to time. So down here, let me click an animation to add. And we'll just go ahead and add the, the female run cycle right here. And there it is. And now here's what's cool if I put you'll see it looks like it's gone completely insane, right? So what we can do, and you'll see by adding these animations, look how we, we can get the character in various poses. Let me go ahead and turn off the bones here for a second, select it only. What I can do is if I come over here and on the, the rate, let me just type in something like 0 0.001. And watch what happens when I hit play. Now you'll notice one thing that starts happening is look how wonky everything gets. And that can happen sometimes with ad additive animations because if you think about it, we're applying differences. We're subtracting, right? We're subtracting one pose from another pose and adding that difference to another animation. And sometimes the math can get weird on that because if you subtract a negative, you can actually have a positive, and then without the right constraints, things start getting really, can get really weird. But let's say I wanted to use this for like, maybe it's an accident and they broke their leg, and I wanted to have a, a flying, someone broke their leg animation or something. This might give me a good base starting point. So let's say I wanted to use this animation. All I'd have to do is simply hit record, and I'll just go okay. And now it's recording 
the animation. Then I can go in and, and fix that leg if I want so it's not bent so far back. But let me go stop right here and we'll go into this new animation. And now look what I've got. How cool is that? Then what I can do is actually go to the first frame here. You can actually come back a little ways. Like that's where it really looks weird, right? But let me just come back over here. Go to character. Go to bones. All hierarchy. And let me select this leg here. And I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just bend it back a little bit. So it's not so weird. Now if I hit play. See, it's still weird, but it's not as weird as it was. So anyway, there's just a lot you can do if you get in here and just start playing around with stuff. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next time.